Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us again. We're happy that you're here to pray Lectio Divina with us. I'm Monica, and I'll let the others introduce themselves. Good morning, I'm Kate. And good morning, I'm Fred. And Fred didn't get the memo to wear blue today. <laughs> it wasn't a real thing. Um, anyway, we're really happy that you're here to pray with us. We are going to be reflecting on the gospel from yesterday and, um, and a little reflection for that. So we will walk you through the steps, whether this is your first time or whether you've been with us before. Um, we're happy that you're here. And please tell your friends about it. We're going to keep doing it every Tuesday as long as we can. So um, good morning, Julianne. So um, we hope that you do participate and comment throughout this thing. Let's just begin with a little prayer. Um, I know I need to calm myself and, and get ready for this moment. So Heavenly Father, we, we just thank you for the abundant blessings that you give us, that you give us as church community, that you give us in just to be alive and to be free, to be able to worship you, even though we feel like our, a lot of our freedoms have been stripped right now. They can never take you away from us. We ask you to just send your Holy Spirit to be with us at this moment. Just settle in this room. Settle in all the rooms of the people who will be tuning in and praying with us. Settle in our hearts. Just help us feel your presence here today. Open our hearts that we hear what you want to say to us in your beautiful, sacred word. Amen. Amen. All right, so um, we will begin with, um, Kate is going to read the full gospel passage. I'm going to read a reflection, and then we'll move into our steps of Letzia Divina. A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice, as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Word of the Lord. Amen. Beautiful. So I, um, again, you know, I, I look at the Sunday Gospel all week and I pray it. And um, usually in the mornings and I just really try to open myself up to the Word, and lately the Holy Spirit's really been inspiring me and giving me these um, modern reflections on a, a, a modern take on the Gospel. This week, um, several ideas were floating around in my head, and um, but the right one finally came through, and so I'd like to read that and share that with you now. It's called The Shepherd's Voice, A Modern Day Parable. Annie awoke early and felt ready to tackle this day. Over the last few months, she had begun to feel defeated. For years, she had worked extremely hard and wanted to succeed. <clears throat> she worked and sacrificed to get ahead. She always tried to do the right thing and walk the straight and narrow path, but nothing good seemed to come out of it. Annie felt like a failure. She had finally had enough and decided to try a shortcut. She turned her gaze away from her true calling, the real goal of her life, and she climbed over elsewhere. If they won't give me the promotion I deserve, I'll just have to take it, she decided. Life had beat Annie down so much that she forgot what she had learned as a child. The childhood image of Jesus as shepherd and her as his beloved sheep was long gone from Annie's store of memories. She no longer saw the door that led her to God. 
She no longer heard the voice of the Good Shepherd calling her by name. There were too many other doors and too many other voices interfering, telling her the way she should go and the kind of person she should be. Get ahead. Do whatever needs to be done to succeed, even if it means knocking a few people off the ladder on your way up. This morning, Annie was on her way to crash a meeting with the board and a new client. She needed to stand out, so her plan was to give the presentation on her own without her other team members. That would show how smart and hardworking she is, and surely they would make her team leader on this account. As Annie rushed down the sidewalk, people were brushing up against her, bumping into her shoulders. Everyone seemed to be in such a hurry, and they all looked confident in where they were going. They were walking in and out of doors as she passed by. She had no idea what was behind those closed doors. How did they know the right one to walk through? Her confidence began to wane. The race up the corporate ladder was beginning to overwhelm Annie. The street looked and smelled like a sheep pasture. She began to feel lightheaded and dizzy. Suddenly, amidst all the chattering and blowing horns and roaring engines, Annie heard someone call her name. The gentle voice said, Annie, come this way. I will show you the way. Annie looked around. She didn't recognize any of the faces surrounding her. No one was even looking at her. But the voice calmly called her again by name. Annie, I am the way. She somehow knew the voice was speaking only to her, yet she wasn't afraid. The voice felt familiar and safe. She was drawn to it and felt connected to it. Spying an alleyway, Annie turned away from the busy street and decided to take the back roads to work, though she wasn't exactly sure why. Doing so put her at risk for being late and blowing the whole deal. It would take longer, and this path was a bit more difficult to navigate, but she went anyway. There were only a few people on this street. Annie slowed her pace and felt like she could, barely, she could finally breathe. It was much more quiet here, so quiet she could hear herself think. Annie noticed the sun shining down on her. Its rays could reach over these smaller buildings. After walking only a few blocks, the scenery changed dramatically. Office buildings were replaced by cottages, quaint little homes with neatly trimmed lawns. She had never even known this neighborhood was back here. Each home had a window box with pretty flowers of all colors that seemed to be reaching up toward the sun and gesturing a peaceful hello to all who passed by. For the first time in a long time, Annie felt calm. Her heart rate slowed as she noticed little details that made each house into a home. Her face bent into a smile when she saw a child's toy lamb on the front steps of one home. The image of Jesus holding a lamb came to Annie's mind. She suddenly knew the voice that had called her name was his. She heard his voice because she is his beloved. She was filled with renewed hope and joy because the Good Shepherd had called her by name and led her out. Annie remembered what Jesus had told the Pharisees, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. Without even realizing it, Annie had gone astray. She was looking in the wrong places and listening to the wrong voices. This turn brought her back to listening for the one who has the plan. He will show her the way to have life and have it more abundantly. All right, now we will move into our uh, reflection on one of the passage, one piece of the passage from the gospel. Um, so let me get that set up. So Lectio Divina it is interpreted to divine reading and an encounter with God. The key elements are to allow the Lord to lead this prayer time, be open to hearing God speak through His living word, surrender to His message for you at this moment, accept the challenge to wrestle with and grow into the word that God gives you, allow His word to nourish and transform you. Reading the sacred word is listening to the, to the voice of God like we were just talking about. So sit still, turn off your distractions and your phones, listen deeply with your heart, be present in each movement, and take time to savor this process. 
be attentive to your breathing, just let go of the distractions, and we open ourselves to this encounter with God. So the first movement is Letio, which is reading. Fred will read the scripture passage slowly. We'll listen for a word or a small phrase that beckons, unnerves, disturbs, or shimmers. We will gently focus on that word in silence. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it abundantly.
Now we go to the second movement, Meditatio, which is translated to reflecting. We will listen to the same scripture passage again. Focus on the word or phrase that shimmers. This time, accept any images, feelings, and memories that stir in your heart. So Jesus said again, Amen, Amen, I say to you. I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly.
Now we move into our third movement, oratio, which means responding. We will hear the same scripture passage for a third time. In this movement, listen for what connects with your life. Feel free to write down and record the prayer or some awareness or call to action that arises from your reflection. At the end of this movement, we will share our words. So Jesus said again, Amen, Amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved, and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Now we're back on. 
So we are going to take just, just a quick moment to share the one word or phrase, and I invite you to type your word or phrase in the comments and share with everyone who's praying with us. The word he gave me was abundantly. The word he gave me was amen, amen, I say to you. He's pleading with the Pharisees. Listen to him. Uh, the words he gave me was to have life. I love that we all get something different. We're listening to the same words. Okay, we'll continue with our final movement. The fourth movement is contemplatio, which means resting. Read the same scripture passage one more time. We'll slow our thoughts and rest in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We offer gratitude for His presence in this time of prayer, stillness, and communion. Thank you all for sharing your words. It's going to bless all of us to be able to see how He's speaking to each one of us individually. So Jesus said again, Amen, Amen, I say to you. I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly.
great. So um, we're kind of at our time limit, but I do want to take a couple of minutes just for a um, little bit of conversation because that is sort of the the last piece of doing Lectio when you're in the company of other people is to just really share what the Lord spoke to you so that we can learn from each other. And I'm going to get something that Fred heard from what he heard is going to end up blessing me. And so um, I encourage you to send your comments if you want. We'll just take a couple of minutes real quick if y'all have something that you would like to share from this prayer time. Yes. Um, I chose the words half life. And um, having lost somebody very close to me recently, I've really been kind of thinking about that over the past week. And I was just thinking about how each of us are given the same blessing when we're born. And we, although we hope that God guides us, we basically choose what we do with that life. And I have so many, I've heard so many people say, if I could live my life over again, mm -hmm. I would do this. You know, I would travel more. I would spend less. I would do this. And, and I hope that we all have realized that this short time that we're quarantined, we're getting the chance to reevaluate how we spend our lives, how what we do with them, the blessings, the ability to reach out to help others and to not concentrate on ourselves so much. Mm -hmm. And that's that's kind of what God gave to me. That's beautiful. That's that's a lot. <laughs> Great. Fred, you want to share? Uh, amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. In the middle of this coronavirus, what we're going through right now, we're trying to do everything our way, our way, and trying to prevent more people from getting sick and looking for a cure on all this. He's telling us that he's pleading with, he is the way. He's pleading, I am the way. Okay, I am the gate. We have to trust Jesus. We have to believe in Jesus and what he came here for, to give us life abundantly. But we have to focus on Jesus. The whole world, is, I'm sure many people are getting on their knees right now. This is what he wants us to do. Okay, we have to focus on Jesus. He repeats it. Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the way. The Pharisees didn't believe it. They said, well, give us proof. I'm telling you, I'm <laughs> telling you, I am the way. Yes. That's what I got. Yes, that's beautiful. That's yeah. wonderful. And that perfectly goes with mine. The word he gave me was abundantly. And I realized that, um, you know, it's easy for me, especially um, to fall into what I'm missing right now and to kind of sink into some sadness of things aren't the way I want them to be, and I don't have what I, I want to have. But today he reminded me that um, I have an abundance. I have an abundance of love and friendship and just the very life that he's given me and the opportunities that he has given me. Um, and right now, just being separated but being connected to so many of you, it just means the world. And it really has made a huge, profound difference in my life. So... Thanks for joining us again, and we um, hope that you continue to remember He's the gate and turn to Him and hear His voice in all of this. So we'll see you next week. God bless you. Ciao.